So we're on to the bolt carrier section of the model. Before that, I think it might be worth just to create a decimated version of this for Blender, just so we can see all the details as we're modeling it uh, with a bit of a reference mesh. This is something that I do quite often, just so it helps um, as I'm modeling it, I can see uh, the details as I go. So. Uh, this isn't really usable in, in Blender. Blender can struggle with high poly meshes, um, I've found. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. Um, it's looking quite angry. <laughs> um, we're going to create a copy of this, and then we're going to decimate it, and then bring it into Blender. So we are going to go to Sepulkin, bring that over to this side. I see what it does that. There we go. And then Subtool Master. And then we are going to um, merge visible. And then we're going to preserve. No, we're not. We're going to merge only. Uh, and what that does is that it will make a copy of them both. over here and it basically protects the original the other way of doing it is duplicating both and merging them down but it's just less clicks essentially I'm just going to save uh, the project um, 03 and then save again as 04 And so here we are. We're just going to group visible. So it's all one poly group. And then we're going to go to geometry. Um, no, we're not going to go into the, the plugin um, panel. And then we're going to go to decimation master. Then we're going to get pre-process pre current, which just uh, any subtools that are visible uh, or oh, currently selected, it will uh, process it ready for decimation. You see, it's analyzing the mesh. Depending on how high poly the mesh is, how dense it is, it can take quite a long time to process. So take this time to get a coffee or a cup of tea. Okay, so that's done now, but before we do that, I'm just going to rename the tool um, just so I can organize the project a little bit better and save it again. <coughs> um, rename. I'm just going to change this one to um, decimated mesh. And then I'm going to change this one to gutter again underscore working. Because that's the one that we're working on, creating all the details for. So back to the decimated mesh that's now being processed. Let's go back to the uh, Z plugin panel. And because we've already pre processed it, don't click it again because it'll do it all. And we're just going to start out at 20% of the current. Um, point count. Oh, so we're gonna have to redo it again because we renamed it. <laughs> well, see you in a bit. 
Okay, that's uh, pre-process pre-processed again. <laughs> um, I'm just going to decimate it at twenty percent. See how it looks. See what the the try the point count is, and that's six thousand three hundred thirty-eight. Still a bit too high. It's retaining a lot of the detail, which is good. There's a lot of flat area, so it's going to lose a lot of uh, poly uh, polys there, which is okay. So let's uh, reduce it down to ten percent. 319 still pretty good we want it really as low as possible until the detail starts um, uh, becomes a bit messy we don't want to get too messy but 5% still pretty good at 159 that's pretty good to be fair let's go with that so we're just going to export this And I'm just going to create a new folder for reference meshes. I typically like to um, separate them into specific folders just so I can organize it better. And then let's jump into Blender. So. Let's save this, incremental save. I'm just going to delete this because it's no longer really needed. Uh, I'm going to import uh, wherever that is. Um, I've got this in my quick favorites again. You can go into file, um, import. I just keep it there because it's quite quick. And then wave front OBJ. I'm just going to navigate to um, the folder. Let it do its magic. Here we are. It's looking quite nice. So the reason why I'm going to go with the um, we're going to go with the um, the bulk carrier first um, is namely because that is really the basis for everything else in terms of the Jubilee clip and the tape. Um, um, and also the foregrip as well. So we're going to go from the bolt carrier and it's probably going to be one of the quickest parts, hopefully. So we're going to go in the front view um, and we're just going to make a, a cylinder, rotate it um, 90 degrees, scale it down. Let's just see. It's quite thin. X-ray mode again. I'm just going to bring it so it uh, goes into the, the foregrip a little bit. And we'll bring it all the way back here. That fits pretty well. We'll probably just go into ZBrush just to allow that to fit a little bit better. Just maybe scale it a little bit down. It doesn't have to be exact, really. And what we're going to do, because we've um, changed the transforms again, if you remember. Uh, the scale is all off, so I'm just going to all transforms to reset it, and then back to origin to the geometry. So it's nice and central. I don't know why whoever made this gun had it <laughs> floating so much, but uh, there you go. I don't know how the trigger mechanism would have worked. Maybe it goes up into the the center. We'll have to have a look at that. Um, let's see how that would work. So, um, the thing to consider here is that if we look at our reference, it's hollow. Uh, so we're going to have to use hard ups just to hollow it out. And then what we're going to do is use ZBrush again to do the, the Boolean action here. 
well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Sharpen. And then we're just going to, to select both those faces. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just insert it. It's quite a thin metal. If you hold shift and then whilst you're scaling or moving, it goes much slower. Whereas if you, if you don't hold shift, it can be quite <laughs> chaotic. If you hold shift, you have a little bit more control to it. We don't want it too thin, um, otherwise the normals would come out quite sharp. So what we want to do is give it an extra little bit of thick, a little bit more thickness, just so it shows up in 3D. Because you've got to think this model isn't going to be up in your face this close. It's going to be if it's in a game setting, say from a third person perspective. Um, um, you're going to lose those details. So we want to retain those details. So we're going to exaggerate some parts a little bit more. So we're going to exaggerate the thickness a little bit and keep it around about there. And then we're going to uh, bridge um, edge loop. So it's, now we have a hollow cylinder. In fact, we're not going to do that because we're only going to do it on one side because both of those ends are not going to be seen at all, but it has to be hollow. Um, and we see that this side visibly has some um, um, screw. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, it's a screw thread. Uh, if we have it too thin, if we create the screw threads, because I, I, I personally want to do it through a boolean operation, um, it's, it's not, not going to be enough geo to do that. So we're going to keep it thick on the one end and hollow on the other end. So we're just going to insert. Keep it thick like before. Control E to extrude inwards and then press W back to the move tool. Then go past the the grip here. We don't need to worry about this end because it is pretty much hidden. Um, you're really not going to see it because it's covered in tape and there's um, a fitting um, on the end anyway covering it. So now what we want to do, I'm just going to bevel this just because why not. I'm just going to save it again and incremental save. So this is where the, the inset starts here. So I'm probably going to use hard ops again, box cut, just to give a preview of where it would be essentially. Um, So it ends around about here. So what I want to do for this is essentially not a cube. I use a cylinder, scale it down. Go to the top view, orthographic, sort those verts in X-ray mode and bring them across. Now we need to have this bring it all the way down past the, the geo just to make sure that the boolean is correct and it in, um, puts it properly. We see that it happens there as well. So how could we do that? So we have the inset here. So if we 
just like this, and then that mesh then do difference. We see it cut out there. So we're probably going to stick with this and then create another cylinder. And this will be the mesh that we use to boolean in ZBrush. We can sort out the transition in ZBrush. Just going to apply a uh, weighted normal to see if that does anything. No, it doesn't. <laughs> now as well here, okay, we're just going to see if that lines up. Create mode just to bring it back. We're just gonna have to guess, really. Gonna have a little bit more to go in more of it. It may even be that this continues all the way through as a continuous thread, but it looks to be thicker here than it does there. So let's not have that. Um, and what we're gonna do is. we are going to create a coil, um, a coil tube. So let's just save it again. And um, what we're gonna do is create a circle. So we add curve circle, scale it down a bit. And if you select all the verts, move them over to the side. And then I believe it's screw. There we go, change it to the x axis and then increase the screw and the iterations. There we go. Um, increase the steps in the viewport so it's nice and smooth. I'm just going to scale it down. Oh. So if it gets too thin, you have to go back into the, the curve and then sex all the verts and then scale them up. So what we're doing here is basically creating the negative mesh for when we want to boolean. So we're just gonna line this up a little bit better starts around about there it's quite it's quite a lot so if we bring the screw down a bit leaving a little bit of a gap making sure that it intersects and we want to play it a little bit thinner actually because there's quite a lot of thread on it one thing we need to make sure is that we leave enough so if you can, um, of the geo past it, so it goes, it booleans properly. We're not left with anything. Um, we'll see how that works out. Um, so I'm just making sure that there's, because if we make it too thick, the, the thread's going to be too thin. And so we just want to scale it properly. So there's enough thread there. Um, and I think that's going to look good. okay. So from here, because it's still a, it's still based off that spline, it's not really geo that you can edit. Just going to do visual geometry to mesh. So now it is editable. Um, 
you'll see that it's not being capped and for a boolean operation you need to have it capped so we're just going to fill that face and then what we're going to do here actually is if we boolean it as it is it's just going to stop there and what we want is we want it to run off so it almost tapers so when we do that we just extrude extrude enough so it, it, it does what we want it to do there like so and we just got to cap the end here as well so select that loop control f to um fill it and then what i'm just going to do i'm just going to sharpen it and then apply a bevel hold and shift just to get some more control increase the segment somewhat and then there we go so this is typically how i do my uh, threaded um my holes or screws I, I usually boolean them i used to model them um but i found that it was much easier and quicker just to do it this way and it's that's really what it what this is about it's good to know how to do that i know how to do it uh, modeling it but whatever works works really so i think we have our first part of it here there done just want to have a look at the top section so just to make note that it's we have a an inside cylinder there as well and we have a spring it looks like there's a tube there as well that the spring goes along so what i imagine this would be like there's an inner tube here that runs along and this is probably like a casing with a spring and when you pull this back it pulls the spring along the pole on the inside so we're going to use do two things create um, a cylinder for the inside and another one for the casing for the bolt to go on and then we're going to create another one of these springs so let's do that now so i'm just going to hide the cylinder cutter here uh, i'm just going to um, put these into a new group new collection i just press ctrl g there to do that uh, and boolean meshes just to separate them and have some organization just so I can hide those out of the way for now. And create another cylinder. Rotate. In fact, we could do it a different way. We could select this, press Q, go to operations and then to shape and scroll until we hit a cylinder. Is that a cylinder? Yeah, that's convex. Change the orientation. There we go. Scale it down. Just so we don't have to do so much uh, movement. So it's quite thin, this inner one. So let's scale it inwards. We can actually do the first one, which seems to be the So if that's the front, it goes to around about there, just beyond it. Then we need to origin to geometry. First of all, the normal transforms. And then I'm just going to insert it a little bit. Just to create that little lip there. And then I'm just going to sharpen, bevel, hold and shift. Crease the edges, there we go. And then what we're going to do from here is again, Q, operation to shape, scroll until we get hit the cylinder, then X to change the rotation, and then click to apply. And then we size it a little bit 
leaving enough room for the spring. And we just want it to be about there. What we're we going to do here, because this is going to have to go along there, we just want to make it uh, so it makes a little bit of sense. So we're just going to insert it there, then it should carry the bevels over with it. What I'm going to do is hold shift and click. So if you want to loop select, first select the face and then hold shift and double click on another one. And then we're just going to scale it down on those two axes because I want to increase the bevel a little bit more. Like so, and which means I'm going to have to shift, shift select these, which is a bit difficult to do in the um, x-ray mode. It's not doing it either. So edge, edge, and then scale. Just so it sits on top. Show up in. I don't need to worry about bevels for that because it's not going to be seen. <clears throat> so the idea is when you have the the bolt there at the top, you pull it back. And what I'm going to do actually, because we want to see that, have that running all the way to the front. No, we're not actually, because this is going to have to carry the bullet. So we'll come to that in a second. Just going to save it, increment save. So now we're going to create a spring again. So using the same technique, we're going to add a circle, scale it down, and then go into edit mode, select all the verts and move them over to the side. Then we're going to add a, um, a screw modifier, change it to X, and increase the screw, and also increase the viewport steps. And then we're going to scale it down. Scale this up a little bit. Just so it fits shape because it's quite a thin spring but we don't want to make it too thin so when in in 3d view when you see it it just looks like something really flimsy we want it to have some stiffness so thickness can help with that I'm just going to rotate it a little bit so you don't see the end of it and then we're going to increase the iterations it's quite spread out as well So that would compress, then shoot back. So with the um, with the barrel, typically with um, a gun barrel, you'll it'll be cut out, um, and when it's pulled back, there should be enough room just to insert a bullet. So if we leave some space there, so when it's pulled back, you could lift up the gun, slot a bullet in. So what I'm going to do is insert. I'm just going to select these faces. In fact, I'm going to do it like this. Holding Control Shift, which is pick the shortest path. And then I'm going to extrude. It's makeshift, so the idea with this is that it doesn't have to be perfect and machined but something that's workable.
And because it's something that needs to be workable, we just have to do some sort of imagination. When the trigger's here, when it's pulled, the spring gear of this uh, this inner tube here, this would probably contain the firing pin where the bullet would go. Um, and when you pull this back, you put the bullet in, and we should probably inset this actually rather than extrude out as well. Uh, and then maybe put a firing pin inside. So when the trigger goes, it would release the firing pin, hit the bullet, and the bullet would shoot out. So that's what we're going to do. So inset again. Maybe a little bit more. And we can just do something like this. Because you won't really see that detail. Um, that should be okay. This is the the um, inset here would just be really for holding the bullet in place. <clears throat> okay, so we should probably because we're going to make this wider anyway in ZBrush. Um, probably should make the um, if we go to operations to shape again so we get to there you go because if you notice on the reference it's a lot wider. Just making sure that it extends down past the geometry, so the boolean will be clean. So if you can press Control G and then um, add to boolean meshes. <coughs> And now we need to make the screw. I'm just going to save it. But first, shall we make this section here? So we need to make this here. So if we make a cylinder, and then it has for the reference one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So in the cylinder sentence, the first is it's plus six, and then rotate on our side to 90 degrees. Scale down. What am I doing? Just got a guess really. It's making sure that it's all a good size. <coughs> all transforms are into geometry. So what we're gonna do is add some edge loops here. Insert. scale it down and then what we're going to do we're going to use circle and this was in the um, edge loops add-ons um, I don't know where it's gone but yeah you'll see it once you have it and uh, I've just appended it to my quicker uh, favorites do circle and you create a perfect circle like so. And then we're just going to insert that. Oh, 
on edge loop in, circle again, and then we're just going to grab these. Actually, I'm going to put some more edge loops in just to control the shape a bit better. And then with that, I'm going to circle again, circle again, and circle again. Grab these edge verts and then bring them down a little bit. Grab these ones. And bring them a little bit more down, just so it creates a bit of an edge. As you can see, it um, arches a little bit. And that's what we want. And we're probably just going to um, use subdivisional modeling for this, rather than use hard ups. So if we add modifier, subdivision, and create some support loops aligned. And I'm just going to increase the viewport resolution of this a little bit. And then what we're going to do is going to grab this edge and then bring it closer to the edge just to bring it in and make it a bit more sharper this needs some edge loops in here just to make it a bit more tighter. Maybe a bit too tight there. That's looking pretty nice. I'm going to insert this again, and I'm going to circle, and then we're going to leave it like that for that part. And what we're going to do is going to do to shape again, get rid of cylinder, change the axis. Just use the reference again for scale. There seems to be a bevel to this. I'm just going to bevel these edges as well. And then we're going to create another um, Boolean mesh for these, um, this thread here as well. But before that, we are going to save and incremental save. Um, and then we will use create a path and 
and then press Q and adjust the curve. Have it lined up. Remember that this isn't completely straight side on reference. Um, it has perspective to it. Perspective, not perspective. <laughs> yep, you know what I mean. Let me bring it up here. comes across a little bit like that perfect and then we'll have to create a thread uh, boolean operation there as well uh, and because we've already created a bolt like this just duplicate this over the difference now however is that we don't need that face delete um delete nope what am I doing just removing it Set again. The difference this time is that it's flat a bit more. Where is it? There it is. But it's also, if we um, we we set transfer arms in there, then mirror across. It's getting a bit heavy. Um. Just lower the subdivision levels a little bit. Ninety degrees. Just want to get it in place, really. I'm going to apply the mirror. Rotate it so it sits just on top. Doesn't have to be exact. But then we get in there. So what I'm going to do, because I haven't converted this into a, a visual geo just yet, I'm going to borrow this spring here. And we're going to adjust it. Resize it just so it clips into it enough. And then adjust the screw so it's got plenty thread. It's got a lot of thread actually, so what I'm gonna have to do is scale this the curve down, decrease the screw value and increase the iterations. Now I wonder if we put a lattice on, maybe move that above. Nope. Okay, never mind, ignore that. No, ignore that. Yes, that's looking good. So what we want to do now, we see that it 
because the mesh tapers here as well. Uh, we want the screw the to taper as well. So I'm just going to do that now. If we add a simple deform and we go to taper. We go to restrictions. What we really need to do is, in fact, if we stop doing that, maybe if we, hmm. So I think I may have figured out what we could do. So the reason why it's not working, the simple deform, is because the origin point is at this, the base, which is where the the original curve is. So what we would need to do is to convert it to visual geometry to mesh. And then we'd have to somehow get it to the middle there. So I'm just going to select this face here. Um, uh, these edges here. And I'm going to go to um, cursor to select it. You can find, uh, I've <coughs> uh, appended it to my quick favorites. And what this does, it will find the median point. Uh, the center point and move the 3D cursor to there. So what we can do with that now is that we can go select our uh, Bezier circle mesh and then we can go origin to 3D cursor. So that's shifted the origin to that point which we want. And now if we add a simple deform, set it to taper, have it at a negative scale, but then add the restrictions. No, that actually sucks. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep it as is. Uh, and then we'll probably taper in, in ZBrush or something like that. Or not do it at all. Maybe if we connect it only. It's a bit odd, isn't it? That will do. <laughs> That'll do. Maybe he doesn't even have a taper. You know what? Let's go back into the past. This thing never had a taper. To be honest, it doesn't even look like it does. So that will do, and that's what we're going to stick with. 
Okay, so that's our, we're gonna have to add those extra faces in so the boolean works. Actually, I'm gonna extrude that. Effects not like that. Extrude faces on normals. Unmark that edge. Okay. So we're getting somewhere, finally. So now we have to create this bolt here. So let's just come to the side. Um, create a cylinder. Increase back to 32. Well, let's create 64. Just nice and cylindrical. So as per the mesh, uh, the reference, should I say, it's welded on. Let's keep that there. So instead of modeling it at an angle, like the reference is at, we're just going to model it straight. And then after it's modeled, we'll just tilt it. quite thick. There we go. Again, zeroing it out. So the scale is good. Um, so the way we could do this next part is we can again go to to shape cylinder all the transforms and origin to the center. And then we can just create a dome there like this. <laughs> and scale it down. Bring it back up. using my reference now for this. So there's one way we could do it. We could boolean it again, either using hard ups or ZBrush, which is the easier method. Or we could just model it. Um, I wouldn't say there's a right way or a wrong way to do this really, as long as it, it works. So let's just try a few different ways just to get the best method. Open up box cutter. Multiple. I just want to reduce the bevel down a little bit. I 
See, there's a bit of a mess here because of all the geometry here, which is a bit of an issue. Uh, it looks <coughs> to be too much of a mess to do it in with hard ups. Of course, you could sub D model it. Um, but really, speed is if you can do it quicker uh, with a really good result, why not do it that way? Um, so, we'll probably, probably just do it through ZBrush. So, I'm just going to delete this modifier and delete the boolean as well. Uh, increase the bevel a little bit more. And I'm just going to increase that a little bit more as well. And sharpen and bevel this. And have it inset because what we're going to do, we're going to weld it to it. And it looks like it's on a little platform almost. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to to shape it with a little with the box, scale it down. Apply the transforms and origin to geometry, sharpen, bevel. And so we're going to do the same thing here. Steal this coil here. Let's move this out of the way. Set it to global. Rotate it 90 degrees. going to scale it down because it's going to be using our other references here. It's quite a lot of thread on it. So I'm going to scale down the, um, the screw and increase the iterations to get to the top. And then increase the iterations again as it goes through to the top. And then we're going to convert that to visual geometry to mesh. Set that ring, fill the face in, and the same for. And again, the reason why we're doing this is because ZBrush has a hissy fit. If, oh, don't do that. Um, if um, there's open edges. A bit strange. I'm just going to isolate it. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to create the box, the Boolean box. I'm here, so I'm just going to select the head, operations to shape, click for the box, I'm 
it's just a real quick, easy way of doing things. Sharpen and bevel it. There we go. So we select those and control G and then add it to the Boolean meshes. And then ZBrush will will move it over to the side and um yeah. I believe that is ready to go to ZBrush. Let's add this to the Boolean meshes as well. Let's save that and incremental save. So what we want to do now is if we find the Boolean meshes, they're all selected. Select this and select everything else actually. So if we hmm, convert visual geometry to mesh just to be sure and then export to obj and then we will go and call this bolt carrier boolean meshes and then again high poly export obj2 which is a preset that i've saved we've triangulated faces and export those Make sure I haven't exploited the wrong things. Nope, that's good. Hide them. Now I wanna I don't need to export the spring the spring. Oops. So everything. Need the box as well. What I'll do is I'll get a spring Ctrl G and there's the bulk carrier collection. Selects everything there except Bezier curve. Which is that? Oh, not FBX, OBJ, and we want to call this just the bolt carrier. And high poly as well. Same settings. Okay. So let's jump into ZBrush. So we're in ZBrush now, and we're going to just import um, our bulk carrier and the Boolean meshes. So we're just going to select the bulk carrier. Here we are, and then Poly Mesh 3D again and import another one. Boolean meshes here. I ah, see. Something to check always in Blender, which I haven't done, is if we hide these and our Boolean meshes, the, the coils. If you press um, Alt V, which I have set to for the viewport for um um hard ups uh if you get to face orientation 
we see that there's some issues here. Um, essentially, the uh, coils are the faces are inverted. So it's, the blue means that the the normals are facing outwards, and red faces means that they're facing inwards. Um, so we need to rectify that. So if we select the coils, um, and we go to face mode and select them all. I've set it as my quick favorites to recalculate outside and voila. If you were to do that any other way, you go to face and then you'd find sorry, mesh. <laughs> Where has it gone? Normals. Recalculate outside. Or flip. But yeah, there we go. Now I can re export those. Let's just turn that off. done let's switch over to ZBrush and then with that um, tool selected just import boolean meshes and it's updated but because we had it triangulated we're gonna have to do some the same operations that we did last time oops so what I want to what I want to do is separate just do auto groups and then um, poly groups Merge similar groups and select these, then group visible, invert the selection, then group visible again. And subtool split, group split. And so we can do these um, similar parts together. If you remember, we go to geometry, Z remesher, detects edges, groups, increases, and then goes to double, and we use all the way to 100, and then hit Z remesher. Let's see what happens. It's great, created some really good geometry for us. Just want to increase the Try count there. Oops. That's okay. I actually needed to do that, so that's good. Uh, and let's do it to these other ones. Same deal again. Then we're going to go to deformation and polish these. So they're nice and smooth. Okay, so now uh, we're going to delete the subdivision levels because they're not needed. And let's go to the bulk carrier. And we've got to do the same with this, with the ex oh, no, we're gonna to have to do it for the for that part as well. So let's auto groups. And let's just see if we can do it all in one. Well, it's done, but we've come across some errors here. See how it's flat in there? Not really sure why that's happened. It's probably because of the triangulation. Um, yeah. So what we could do is hmm. 
separate this part. Uh, split hidden. And then we could dynamesh it. Go up to twenty forty eight again. It'll take a while for this to work. Do, 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 do. So it's worked. Uh, it took a while. My PC nearly crashed. <laughs> and it's actually included this section here which is fine that's okay um, what we actually it's not okay so we're gonna undo that and we actually need to separate that out so auto group and then split this again And then just dynamesh it. But I'm just going to change it to 1024 this time. And here we are. It's pretty low res. That's okay. Just increase the subdivision levels. Um, use polish perhaps or just manually smooth it out just to get rid of that faceting that's happening that's okay if it looks like this for now because it's pretty damaged metal anyway Just smoothing it all out. Okay. Nope, stop doing that, please. Let's untick Dynamesh. I've done that several times now. Uh, and so we want to do it to the rest of these now so but instead of using dynamesh we'll go back to z remesher hopefully it won't mess up it's looking pretty good pretty good indeed Apart from there, that's bizarre. Oh, it's because it's not being. So what we'll do this. We'll separate this subtool. Turn on transparency so we can just see the the caps needed. Go into geometry. Modify topo um, topology and then just close holes. Then group visible.
the remesher and just use this one. Increase the uh, subdivision and then polish a little bit and do the same again. Okay. So let's run this again. Good. So I'm just going to separate these parts that need to be have some booleans done to them. And then to here. So you want the spring. Append the springs over. So we need to separate these out as well. So they're auto group. Split hidden. So that's part of it. So I'm going to shift click to the top and hide this and then select this and just move this to there. I'm going to hide or unhide, I mean, hide everything else because we don't want to boolean those. Uh, well, apart from the, the parts we actually need. That was weird. Okay. Um, same deal as before. So that's... Um, this is the part that's being booleaned, turn on live boolean, and subtract that. There's an issue. And what is the issue? Let's have a look. Ah, it's not a closed hole. Okay. So as before, modify topology and then close holes. So we have to delete this lower sub add subdivision levels. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. So we're just going to make boolean mesh. find this and group visible and what we're going to do is geometry and Z remesh it again we're just going to try it with adapt or the same because it's quite high uh, quite a high poly count This may take a while because it's quite a dense mesh. And we're done. Got good topology. A lot less a lot less polygons. Same form. So what we can do now is just um, subdivide again. 
and then just polish. It's looking good to me. Just going to rename this to threads. So now we can get rid of this. Um, delete that and delete the boolean objects for those. So now we're left with this and if we append That's what we're left with. So if I isolate this by control shift clicking, and then <clears throat> because we have subdivisions, we delete those. So we can split. And in the Boolean objects, we just want this. So auto groups, making sure we don't have uh, any subdivision levels, split hidden, go back to the <coughs> bulk carrier and append the box. Same affair, straight to the top, shift click, so everything's hidden apart from that, then click it again without the shift uh, applied. And then let's find our box and then make sure live booleans on, have the arrow on and then put it to subtract and it's not visible. There we go. And whilst this is on, we can actually move this. Well, we could if we could frame it right. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Okay, there we go. Let's just rotate this better. So you can actually move the boolean object and it'll affect it and scale it if we think it's too tight, too big. I think that's pretty good. Maybe scale it back. Make sure that the, the objects that you want is um, selected and then make boolean mesh. There we go. So same again, just group visible. Geometry, said we measure all these sends again, and then Z we mesh. And there we are. Then we're just going to smooth that out. We're just going to use the polish again. Just to get some uniform polishing, smoothing going on. And I'm going to come in with some harsher polishing. Have a look at my reference. Because it's quite soft. 
edges, quite soft bevels. So we're just going to sort of emulate that really. So now that that's done, we can delete these again. Turn off my billings, we don't need it at the moment. And then we will append. And we will move up. Because it shows through. There we go. So if you go to the booleans again, wherever they are, and now we need these two cylinders. So keep them selected, go back to the bolt carrier and append those. And again, the exact same operation as before. Um, have this at the very top, select these just under it. Shift click and then click it on again and the boolean objects of course. So then to subtract, make sure live boolean is on. That's pretty good. So now what we'll do is make a boolean mesh from this. Go to the unified mesh now. Group visible. And we'll use that to remesher again. Set it the same because it's 2 million polygons at the moment, so it's quite high. And then just set a remesh. And here we are with it. Some nice geometry there. Going to start smoothing that out, and then I hold shift and decrease the Z intensity of the smooth. Won't be as harsh. I'm just going to increase the subdivision levels now and then just move this out a little bit. That's looking really good. So let's go back to this main mesh and we can delete this and append great you're doing good 
So now we want to weld this to this. And that's going to be through another Boolean operation involving these three meshes here. So I'm just going to subdivide this mesh here down below. I'm just going to separate this actually. Um, It's a little bit high poly for what it is. So I'm just going to reconstruct the subdivision levels and then delete um, higher. Just so I can smooth that out a bit better. What I'm going to do as well is move it over so it's not showing that part there. And then we'll just adjust the, the spring in Blender. So delete lower. Make sure there's no subdivision levels. And I guess it doesn't really matter which one is on top for this because we're just going to uh, merge them all into one object basically and what this will enable us to do is create the geometry in between the intersecting meshes so we can just sculpt some uh, flat welding to it so i'm just going to start off with this basically and then uh, live boolean making sure it's the only things that are visible So because that, that, this will be union, these selected here. So we go to make boolean mesh and wait for it to do its thing, which is quite fast. Here we are. And then what we want to do, oh no. Ah, that's why. So split this. And then hide this mesh. And let's do that again. Make boolean mesh. Now we just create another U mesh. There we go. Let's move this out a little bit more. Then Z remesh. It's, there's a lot of different shapes here, so it could mess up potentially. So double because there's not that many. There we go. It's pretty good. So turn off the live boolean. Let's just work on this whilst we can in this clean uh, file, tool file, whatever it's called. Uh, so we're just going to subdivide a couple of times. And then using the tablet, I'm just going to start. 
with the clay brush and with a circular alpha I tend to have the intensity for this quite high Just play around with it until we have something we're happy with. It's pretty straightforward this, there's nothing really special with worlds. We are going to make it a little bit messy like we did when we when we found the references. So just layering these. And then on the join itself. Just doing the big forms first before we do the smaller forms. And then we can just add those little bulges here and there. No, I could do not too much. So now we want to append this to the main, but uh, we want to get rid of this. Delete, 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 show, and then append. What I've realized that I haven't done is I haven't rotated it, but that's okay. Nope. Let's not do that. <laughs> okay, let's move this down. Lock it again. Um, well, we can't even do that just yet. Okay. No. Don't press Shift X in ZBrush. It'll do that. <laughs> so, if we. Merge down. Run hide this again. 
unlock this, should say, move it down, then lock it into place. And then what we could do is just mask this section up here. Let's see how well this works. It might be an absolute disaster. And then just twist that part there. There we go, that's all right. It's not too bad. So now let's detail this a little bit. Just with the clay brush, just going around, just like the, the example. Pretty rough. So now the trim brush, which flattens the section that we want to be flattened out, like the reference. Remembering not to go too crazy with the details, but just enough to show some wear and tear. And the bolt itself is could be a little bit damaged, just like a slight little knocks to it. some nice normal information and then with this as well as per the reference we can just start detailing this a little bit where a screwdriver would have be pressing against the sides a little bit. That should be okay, something like that. Just want to give a little, a little bit of um, indentations on here. Not too much because it's pretty clean. This, but just on the on the side where maybe they've used um, a wrench or something too, and it's like scraped the. the edges a little bit and worn them down a bit.
I haven't done the thread there, but that's okay. Don't need to get everything perfect. I mean, that could just be welded on or something. Making sure that it's not everything isn't brand new. Has a bit of history to it. Okay, so let's get this in here. That's a pend. Making sure that's the right one. It's not. So let's delete that. There we go. It's that bottom one. Well, what we could do actually is just merge them all down, merge visible. Delete and then append. And there we go, there's the bolt carrier. We're just gonna separate this. Hiding that. What we're going to do is going to separate into chunks because I'm right now I'm thinking about retopology and how the essentially how would I go about retopologizing it in terms of the chunks of the high poly mesh so obviously this piece would be on its own uh, in its entirety and just um make the low poly from that whereas if this is different parts so uh, if we have this on its own this section here I can just um, create the low poly from this this whole section as one mesh um, and then have this as one mesh on its own Yeah, so that's good. So I'm going to stop this video here uh, and then we're going to continue on in the next video. Uh, welcome back. We're going to carry on with the the modeling, um, specifically, specifically starting with the bolt carrier. And we're going to um, do some more work on this end part, which seems to be the stock. Now I noticed in the reference um, Actually, um, and there's some more detail there that we've missed from the top. So we're going to go back and do that and also create a boolean mesh for the, the thread as well. So let's jump back into Blender. I'm just going to, to find my bolt carrier. There we go. Come back to this um, bolt head. Just 
going to insert this. And when I want, I want, I want to uh, scale this in a little bit, but I want to do it uh, to both of them so it's uniform. And when we do this, we notice this, there's some scaling issues here. It's not uniform and it's not um, the individual origin points. So to change this, we can come to here near the um, transform orientation <coughs> and go to the pivot point and we can change it to the individual origins. So what this will do now is it will correctly scale according to uh, the faces origin point. And we want to get it so it's approximately the same. With is this, and I'm just going to enable wireframe just so I can see. And I'm going to bridge those edge loops together. And now I'm going to create some support loops. Like so, in fact, it can be a bit. Go back to medium point and then scale inwards. If we, when we rotate, um, if we go to the outer circle or one of these axes and stretch out the, um, stretch out uh, a path from it, it'll give us a little bit more control then it's say if we were real close and it moves a lot faster, but if we're out further away, it gives us a little bit more control over the rotation. And this, it seems like this, in fact, needs to be Going a little bit higher in the reference, it was there's a bit of an insert, so it didn't go all the way. I mean, we can do that. For that, I'm just going to loosen up those edges a little bit using the Versic slide, maybe, perhaps. No, I don't need to. And now with this, um, I'm going to convert to uh, mesh and then cap it. Do the same here. Control F. And I forgot I haven't got the screencast keys on. Sharpen. We don't really need to do that. We can just bevel it straight away. Just make sure that sits on nicely. I'm just going to use the arrow key, which is what I've set it to, to uh, grow the selection. I've got the normal selection on, um, medium point, and I'm just going to bring those down a bit and then grow my selection again. And bring this down again. Save that, and then save an incremental save. 
In fact, um, to save some time, we're not going to do that. We're going to bring it higher up. Um, and this is because, um, one, it, it looks a little bit more interesting, personally. And two, it means that we don't have to necessarily do the boolean or create any more geometry on the inside that would be unnecessary to do now that you won't be able to actually see it which means that we only have to do, create the detail for this section here so I'm just going to grab this uh, screw again change it to global orientation I'm holding control to um, um, rotate um, every five degrees. Okay, I'm just going to scale this down. I'm holding shift and I'm just going around just to get it. lining up okay and now we need to adjust the screw settings but it needs to intersect so i'm just going to scale it down again just to make sure that it intersects properly and increase the screw um the iteration just so it goes past and that looks good to me visual geometry to mesh yeah cap that and then based on the face num extrude control e go all the way past it don't need to do that for this part apart from capping it And sharpen bevel. My own. <coughs> so now, because this whole thing has changed, I'm going to have to export. I might as well just export it all as one because then we can just separate it in ZBrush. Find the base mesh. I'm just going to call it stock base. Make sure it's back onto that preset which includes triangulated faces and then export. Okay, let's jump back into ZBrush. So this includes this piece of uh, metal here. I've done it again, shift it. Bring it back again. I need to change that. <laughs> So I'm just going to hide this and then just make sure I've only got that selected split, split hidden. And then I'm just going to delete this. I'm going to go into Play Mesh 3D um, and then Import. And again, we have this issue, which I always forget to do. This is where, again, if you remember, the, the normals of the faces are inverted. So I'm just going to select all the faces. And then we're going to recalculate outside. And if you don't remember where that is, 
that was in um, if you go into edit mode select all the faces and then go in face I mean mesh normals and then we calculate outside or we can do flip it's the same thing almost same result so let's re-export that Okay. Then just import it again. There we go. Whilst we have it here, we may as well. In fact, no, we'll go into the, the project file here. Is this the right one? Let's find it. There we go. So what we're going to do here, in fact, um, we're just going to clean all this. So if we restore configuration, we've cleared them all here. Um, and then we're just going to append and then append the stock base there because it was getting quite cluttered <laughs> so we wanted to um well my ui is gonna all weird now so i'm just gonna go back to uh we still that There we go, we got it back. Just gonna auto group. Separate this, split hidden. And then separate that again. So now what we need to do with this, like last time in the previous video, is go into geometry. Z remeasure, turn these on, double, and increase these to 100, and then Z remeasure. And what we want to do is want to polish it a little bit just to smooth out those hard edges, and then subdivide a few times. So we got some geometry to, to work with. So now what we want to do is just bring that to the top just so it's ready. Select the boolean mesh and do the exact same thing again. Group visible because there's some um, extra groups created there. And then we want to smooth out with polish and increase the poly count for that. And then we're going to delete the um, subdivision levels because we don't need them. And in the subtool, if we make sure this is brought to the top below the object, we're just going to shift click, click the top one so they all uh, become invisible, even though we've got one selected. It is visible because if we were to go on this one, only that one object would be visible. So if we come on this one, turn this on, and the boolean mesh. Make sure live boolean is on. Uh, so this this is the one that will be affected, and anything underneath it that is visible will affect that mesh, and we want to subtract. <coughs> That's looking okay for now. So 
and we're going to make boolean mesh I'm just going to bring the pivot point back to the actual objects because when we move around in the scene it's going all crazy. So we're just going to, I just press W to bring up this, the uh, trans, uh, transform tool. And we're going to go to the unmasked mesh center. So now it's, it's all good rotating around it. And we press Q to go back to the editing. And we're just going to do the same thing as before. We're going to root visible. So it's all one poly group. And then we go Z remesh again. Oops, I pressed it, but let's see. I'm going to escape. Text edges. There's no groups. I'm going to keep creases. And it's at 500 odd thousand. So we will just keep it as the same for now, see how that works out. And it's done. You can turn live boolean off. That's pretty good. Just gonna increase the subdivision levels and then polish. Just to smoothen up those edges. And we go back to the stop base. Not that one. And again, we're going to delete these because they're no longer needed. Then sh shift and click the, the icon, I icon to make everything visible again. And then we're just going to repent that new mesh. Okay, making some good progress now. So I'm just going to save this. And have another save. Okay then. So the next part is the full grip and um, that'll be in the next video.